okay. <laughs> I do. I look completely different. I know. <laughs> so who's Jackson Palmer? That's not him. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really posh. I like it. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, all clean cut now. So I had to do it for work. So I went to a conference recently in LA and uh, thought I should tidy myself up. Is everybody commenting? Oh my goodness. It's okay. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, wow, I should do this every month. I should, yeah, instead of every six months, but <laughs> which is like my current trend, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, my hair. Okay, <laughs> that goes. Bad hair days. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Folks, I'm Tina Hui with Follow Coin, and we're here with Jackson Palmer, the creator of Dogecoin. Or the Doge Father. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, starting to use that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's it feel being called the Doge Father? Cool. I'm cool. Cool. <laughs> well, we're excited to be here on our regular Follow the Coin, Doge Coin, Jackson Palmer hangout and show. So, I mean, there's a lot of news going on right now. Yeah, I'm glad on. to be here again. In the last two weeks, there's been a lot of stuff going on in the Bitcoin world to talk about. So, yeah, we're not going to run out of topics. <laughs> well, maybe you could lead with the topic of choice to discuss. Ooh. Well, it would be good to get a recap from you, kind of like around all this stuff that I saw in Las Vegas. Some of the conferences and stuff looked really cool. It's a shame I couldn't be there. Oh, I know. You were in LA, right? I was in LA at an Adobe conference, boring Adobe conference. <laughs> you love Adobe. We love Adobe. I do. <laughs> uh, well, actually, so I guess we started calling it Bitcoin Vegas Week or Vegas Bitcoin Week because there were three conferences in one. It was kind of overwhelming. Wow, that's a lot of conferences. I know. It was uh, Inside Bitcoin's Coin Agenda and then Hashers United, which I'm cool. kind of bummed out I didn't get to stay for Hashers, but there's only so much Vegas you could take anyways. I've never been to Vegas, so I have to oh. go at some point and experience the craziness that I've been told about. So. Oh boy, don't go too crazy. <laughs> I'll try. I won't turn it into the hangover. <laughs> yeah, none of that, okay? you got to still survive <laughs> Vegas. It's best to go in kind of with a limit of how much you want to spend gambling. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It's so not cheap. Okay. People people go crazy. They're there. It becomes like a ego thing. And suddenly you dial in. And then all your money's gone. Okay. That doesn't sound fun. But we'll, we'll, do the Doge, we'll do a Doge goes to Vegas or something. Oh, that sounds interesting. I can imagine a bunch of people dressed up in Dogecoin t-shirts, like, going around and taking over Vegas and casinos. That'd be so awesome. Cool, yeah. Yeah, we got to do that. Okay, it's on the docket. Okay. <laughs> next year. Next year. <laughs> next year, next year. The rest of the year is going to be pretty busy, I think. So. Oh, yeah, it's looking to be quite a hectic few weeks, actually. Yes. So, I guess, I mean, we'll cover, we'll cover, uh, Vegas Bitcoin Week was great. Follow the coin through an event. We had... So many people come. A big out. event, right? Yeah, we had like about 200 people, I think, and it was awesome. So thank you guys for coming out. It was amazing seeing everybody. It was so funny. At first, we were there, but like, nobody's here because <laughs> it was so early. <laughs> everybody arrived fashionably late. That's how, that's how things go in a bit. Yeah, and then Casper for Coin Motion like, don't worry. We'll have fun anyway. And I'm like, no one's coming. We have to be here until 1 a.m. <laughs> so, but everybody was dressed up fashionably well in Vegas. So everyone looked beautiful. Bitcoin, altcoins, everybody looked great. Really? All in like suit and tie? Or? Oh, yeah. Beautiful dresses, suit and tie. Oh, wow. Dresses, okay. You know. Those coin events were a little bit more low key, but. <laughs> more haircuts? <laughs> yes. Yeah, look at this. All polished. <laughs> <laughs> oh, polished. Oh, yeah. So it was a great week. Um, I think some of the key topics of discussion definitely was bit license, mm -hmm. which is coming out October twenty first. Well, yeah, at least so, the revised version is. So. Yeah, that's that's yeah the revised version. So, and what I'm hearing is it's it's going to be pretty strict. Um, but uh, I believe the uh, Lorsky is going to present it at uh, Money Twenty Twenty. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be really interesting. So I think that's early November. Is Money Twenty Twenty? Yeah, and then before that, I'm hearing that there's going to be kind of, you know, there's been some rumblings on Reddit and kind of in the back channels um, regarding uh, some changes. Well, some, some things that I think the feds are going to crack down on. So um, I'm sure you've heard about that. Oh, I think I uh, we did a video about it last night. <laughs> and we're getting 
quite a bit of discussion going on. No, you guys, like I said, uh, are the first people I've seen actually cover it, um, apart from what I saw on Reddit. Um, but yeah, I'm hearing the same kind of thing. Um, I think we all knew it was going to come along eventually. Um, I think, really, a lot of people have been protecting themselves preemptively. Like, you've got people um, like the Circles, the Coinbases, who have been, like, proactively making sure that they can adhere to any regulation that does come about. Um, so it's like kind of like uh, that KYC stuff, um, just knowing who your customer is. Um, right. but I, think, I think ultimately that's what it's going to come down to, right, is like um, the government are going to want to know who these people are that you're collecting all this money off. Um, so, Do you yeah. think that's the meat and potatoes of it all, really? I think so. I, I, I think it's ultimately... I mean, this would have to happen, right? If we want to have a legitimate currency, well, then some sort of regulation is going to have to happen, unfortunately, right? Like, um, so as it grows, yeah, it's a reality. As it grows, we knew this was going to happen. Um, Fingers crossed it doesn't happen with Dogecoin too quickly. Um, But, yeah, with Bitcoin at least, I think um, people that that, that should be not worrying, but just like like writing a letter to FinCEN or, um, you know, just talking to their lawyers, um, uh, people that have, like, collected a lot of crowd sale stuff. Um, I've always been kind of like skeptical about crowd sale stuff and the legality of it because it's like kind of a gray area, you know? Um, and so I think, yeah, I think the big ones that are, the, the big companies that are going to be impacted by this will be crowd sale. Um, faucets maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think mm, kind of, maybe, I don't think faucets will necessarily. I think it's, I think it's when you've um, gone from like Bitcoin into fiat or, or vice versa. So I think it's going to be people who are like, um, done like essentially these kickstarters but with bitcoin and taking a whole bunch of money from people which they've then um, undoubtedly cashed out because they're kind of trying to offer when they do that these like kind of fake securities um, well they're not fake but they, they aren't technically legal I think the other thing will be the ICOs so like the initial coin offerings which a lot of people have done um, where they've been like hey if you give us a bitcoin you'll get when we eventually build our system you'll get a thousand or however many thousand of these, whatever coins. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's similar to the crowd sale thing, right? It's like taking somebody's money in promise for something, um, and then ultimately what you're doing is you're funding development using that money. It's a, it's, it's a bit, you know, you're issuing tokens, and so to like, uh, in FinCEN's eyes, um, it's kind of like, well, it's the same as gambling, right? You're issuing, you know, credits. Um, right. It can be cashed out. So that's that's a bit tricky. And then the big other big one's going to be exchanges, but exchanges have always been kind of, you know, all over the place. And I think it's gone to a point now where every exchange is so kind of like, they've gone to great lengths to be legalized. So Oh, I know, they've got compliance officers. Yeah, it's like every every exchange I know has somebody, like has dedicated teams of lawyers. And so if anybody's going to be prepared for it, I think it's going to be them actually. So I think there'll be other people who have just been like, hey, you need to collect like 5,000 Bitcoin to do something. Let's just do it. Um, I think they're the ones that might just get caught in this case. So that is you, you should make sure you kind of protect yourself. At least call. Uh, that's what yeah. the, yeah. I think, urgency has. I think it's all about uh, good business practices at the, in the end. Um, Absolutely, yeah. At the end. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's not something we all, idealistically, everybody's like, okay, I can run a business. And like all this legal stuff, it's really annoying and boring and taxes. and but So it's pretty painstaking. I mean, we oh, yeah. deal with it at follow the plane too, and it's always going, Wait, you need to pay how many taxes? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and that's why that's why people like like these services like Kickstarter, right? Because what Kickstarter did was with at least US dollars, it, it made it got rid of all the legal stuff that you have to do in the past if you wanted to run a crowd sale or a charity drive, right? Right. Um, in Bitcoin, people kind of just try to like mimic that, um, but the legality of that is the gray area. So we'll see what happens. Um, I think if it's, I don't think any of the small guys are going to get hit by it. I think it'll be just more like. These are the regulations. Um, you know, this is what you need to do moving forward. You need to collect like KYC information on your customers, and then I think what it will be is like exchanges. Like when credits go from one exchange to another, they'll have to pass over the information. One interesting thing is that it's only going to apply to U.S. people, right? Right. Uh, so, so that's going to be really interesting to see what happens there because, like, what do the services in America just have to start like blocking U.S. customers until? Uh, like people from US, P- US IP addresses, do they just get blocked until people can kind of like sort out all this stuff? Because at the moment, a lot of exchanges don't collect um, any information on who you are. So that might be something that changes. Um, 
in which case I think people will just start using other exchanges, like foreign exchanges that aren't uh, liable. Um, but eventually, I, think, I yeah. mean, but that comes up with a really good discussion point of whether or not eventually all the countries, you know, governments are going to sit here and say, okay, these right. are the standards and this is the protocol. I think. Right. Well, I think what will happen is FinCEN will come down with the rulings, um, and I think that will kind of, you know, the thing that's holding most states back at the moment, to be honest, is that they have a lack of understanding of what on earth this whole thing is. So if the feds and if uh, Lorsky and New York can come in and they can kind of like set a precedent, they can say, here's a rule book. Um, I think all the other states, um, you know, for good or for bad, are going to say, well, um, we're trusting you. We're going to trust you, so we're just going to adhere to that in our state as well. Because, um, you know, they've or done... Or there'll be some opposition, maybe, hopefully. Maybe. Maybe in some states there'll be some opposition. Who knows? Um, I think one the thing that worries me the most is that, uh, that what might happen prior to Money 2020 is, so a lot of people with all of this regulation are like, hey, uh, they're not going to really enforce it. Like, we're not going to, you know, nobody's going to come knocking on our door because of this, you know. So my worry there is that maybe FinCEN, maybe the feds will try to, like, pick a few and be like, these are the big ones, you know, we're not joking around this time, you know, bit license is real. Um, hopefully, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, hopefully you nobody know, gets burned, um, but, you know, it's been the Wild West for quite a while, and, you know, with every success story about, the way I like to talk about it is, every time somebody, like, sells a bunch of Bitcoin and it's like, hey, I made thousands of dollars out of Bitcoin, ultimately that would translate, what that translates to is that somebody else has lost thousands of dollars in Bitcoin. Um, so there's always like good and bad, it's like a balance, um, and a lot of people are losing their money and being scammed, or they're not, not sure what they're dealing with, and that's what like groups like FinCEN um, and consumer protection agencies are there for, to protect people from this kind of stuff. So um, if Bitcoin's ever going to get big, this stuff has to happen. Right. I mean, I am I think we're all on the same side of the fence where we're like, okay, this sort of not the most ideal thing to occur, but it's a reality that it has to at some point. We could all sit here and say this is, you know, fun all we want, but... Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I, I think a lot of people, you know, on Reddit and Twitter and stuff that have just been, there's been murmurs about this stuff for a little while, and I think... Uh, this year it might well, actually I'm, be real. Yeah, I'm starting to hear some people saying, no, this is actually going to happen, and, you know, the severity might be worse or better, I, I don't know, but... Um, I just, think protect you, just protect yourself, yeah. manage, manage your business like you would any regular business, um... And just protect yourself. It's the best advice. Just bare minimum, like call the SEC, see if you're in compliance. If yeah. not, then say, okay, well, how do we fix this? You know, do I have to? I'm hearing there's a lot of deferred fines and fines that are going to be in the guidelines. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that might even be the case. It might be like, hey, you've got three months to get your act together, and then you'll be fine. Right. But, uh, yeah. So, in that, if that's the case, great. Like, people can just get, you know, get compliant, um, and. It's not just going to be this massive, like, there's not going to be people showing up in vans outside people's doors. Oh, I don't gosh. Think. <laughs> scary would that be? Good Lord. <laughs> hey, we said it's going to be a busy end of the year, so, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope it's not that busy. Not that busy, <laughs> no. Not that severe. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, just do be careful, I think. It's like, you know, I think we're kind of... Yeah, like, absolutely. what I'm hearing yeah. from everywhere is... It's not... Yeah, yeah. I think it's mostly going to affect Bitcoin. I don't know what's going to happen with Dogecoin, um... I think it actually it, it, it encapsulates all digital tokens, so we'll see what happens. But I think most of the enforcement, like, in terms of um, enforcement, yeah, I think it's going to be the big ones, you know, like Bitcoin is, you know, got what, a $5 billion market cap. It's a little bit different to, to Dogecoin. So. What do you think about, like, open source code and how maybe they'll treat that? Yeah, that's really stuff. interesting. So, yeah, I actually just, like, pinged Charlie Lee about this, and I'm like, hey, are we, are we all good? Is this going to be a problem? <laughs> Um, I think we aren't technically issuing tokens because it's on a decentralized network. Um, so I think in terms of like myself and the Dogecoin developers and Charlie and the Litecoin developers, I think that's all good. Um, it's just a piece of software that can be like forked. And, um, I think like, uh, I think it's like I was saying, it's more to do with people who are issuing a token, um, which can be traded for, or, or when you're, you personally are trading it for something else that is of financial value. So, like, these people that are, that are doing crowd sales and taking money and then transferring it into U.S. dollars yeah. uh, or exchanges which operate in the world of fiat currency. Um, that's really tricky, right? Like, 
Uh, so I, I think we'll see what happens. But the rest of the month in early November is going to be really interesting to see yes. how it shakes out. Somebody actually, I think we joked, winter is coming. So I think <laughs> winter is coming, sadly. <laughs> It's coming fast. Know. Or at least it's going to be an interesting winter. Yeah, well, yeah, winter is coming. It's been Which sunny way? for quite but, some time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think we nobody should get too worried. We'll see what happens. Um, but it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks. And I think it's actually going to be good for digital currency because it kind of legitimizes everything. You know, it's well, I think it'll actually be good for people who operate businesses in this space because... Everybody was second guessing everything that they were doing. They were like, "Is this legal? Do I need to do that?" You know, if there's an actual rule book that is like, "Do X, Y, and Z, and we'll never hassle you," then I think it's actually going to be good for people and good for people that are getting investment as well, right? Like a lot of people, like a lot of VCs have been like, "I'm not touching a Bitcoin business right now because there's no rule book. I don't know if I'm investing in something that is actually legal." But yeah, no, totally uh, on page that maybe a rule book actually. It should be good because once you've got an idea, I don't know, it's like anything else. If you have guidelines and you have some sort of procedure, at least you know how to proceed versus... Yeah. I think there's been even quite a few startups that actually want to maybe go and experiment, innovate further, but you're kind of just held back going, okay, well, I don't really know what the guideline is here. So. Yeah. Yeah. I actually feel like a lot, of, a lot of innovation in this space has been held back this past year because of the impending bit license. So I think it's actually going to be really good to get it out of the way and it's like, okay, we now actually have a clear direction for moving forward. We know where we're liable, where we're not. And yeah, I think it's a good thing. So this is where digital currencies can occur, sort of create and manifest itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Like we all knew it would happen. So necessary growing pains. Mm -hmm. Just be mm -hmm. careful. Pra business practices are so important. I think it's something that, I mean, we both live in Silicon Valley and there's a lot of tech startups and even there, I mean, so many gray lines that you could accidentally step over and then you're going, oops. <laughs> yeah, I think that the thing is a lot of people, um, especially early on when they started getting into the Bitcoin world and they started building these companies, they just kind of like, they didn't treat it like a regular company. And I think some of the real, the best, most successful businesses I've seen in the space They've come in and they, they've said, well, this is a business. This is a legitimate business. I'm going to run it like one. Um, and I think they're the ones that have succeeded. I think if you if, if it feels like you're not managing your business appropriately, like you would a real-world business um, or a traditional business, well, then you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, so, Well, that's, I think, the reality, definitely. I, I'm with you on that. Well, it's difficult. Running a business is just hard. I don't think people... Yeah. I think it's been glamorized to a certain extent. Oh my God, I want to start a startup. It's going to be like perfect to be the boss. And then you go, yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of really unfun stuff going on. Like you don't get to yeah. work on product all day long. You actually have to work. And Absolutely. That's why I haven't done a startup yet. It's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous sometimes. I'm like, oh man, that nine to five job and that steady paycheck sounds great. <laughs> so, it's all right. <laughs> well, because then you see even big companies also uh, like, you know, just patent issues all the time and different IP oh, yeah. discussions and disputes and so you can't ever run a business smoothly going okay we're going to just do this and everyone's going to be okay with it it's like yeah no absolutely I think that's why a lot of people have also lost money in this space because people who never run businesses before were like well I know how to code so I'm going to make an exchange or I'm going to make a faucet or I'm going to do this or that with bitcoin because it was super simple to get involved in um, but we're talking about like you know, college students who've never run a business ever don't have the time to do it. And so when that thing goes down, it's, you know, it's kind of to be expected because um, they didn't have that experience. So I think with all of this stuff, once there's a rule book, then you're going to get some players involved, especially in like Silicon Valley, who have got 20 years experience in, in funding and in building products in this space. And I'll be like, okay, now I've got a rule book. We know, what's, we know what we can do. And yeah, I think it'll be a good thing. Yeah, overall. I mean, it's going to be a rough winter or fall yeah. season. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it'll be, I don't know if it'll be rough as much as it will be just like, there'll be a shake up. Kind of um, a reality check. Yeah. Exactly. It's exactly. Check. We've been getting around pretty loosely for the last couple of years, so. Um, and I was, I mean, you were here for more of it, actually. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, and it's crazy, right? Like, I, I think of my, like, my story and how, you know, like, on a whim, through Twitter and just with a guy in Portland, in four hours we were able to create a digital currency and it's now got like a $25, 30000000 market cap. Like, 
that's really cool and it's super fun. But you know, from a legal perspective, you can kind of understand why that can't. That's not sustainable. Um, so. I mean, that's just real. You wake up and go, oh wow! Like a lot of people are, yeah, Dogecoin users right now. In yeah, and the thing is, I don't want to see any of those Dogecoin users like get scammed or like trust a business or exchange that runs away with their money or any of that. And there has been some of that. So like, if there's some moves we can make to legitimize and, and help people who do just want to have fun on the internet, then it's protecting all everybody, all the people that love Dogecoin anyway. So I'm kind of for it. Staying safe is always a good thing. Ultimately. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then moving, I guess, well, talking about, you know, regulations and stuff like that. Did, did you hear about Overstock? That was the other yes. really big topic. Uh, they're going to create a decentralized stock exchange or stock market, I guess. So. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. I think it's still in, like, the early days. Um, but I think it shows their, that they are invested in digital currency. Like, they actually believe in it. Overstock are one of the few companies, actually, who accept Bitcoin, who actually hold on to it. They, they hold on to, I think it's upwards of 10% of the actual Bitcoin, and they, can, they give it to employees and stuff. Um, so they're not just cashing out directly to US and treating it like another payment option. Like they actually have some belief in it. Um, so yeah, Overstock are pretty cool, and we'll see what they do. Um, they're assembling a team, I believe, of kind of experienced people and two developers from Counterparty, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we'll see what happens. And yeah, Counterparty is a really cool technology, which I love. So it's like innovative, which I love. Can you explain uh, yeah. to folks that may not know what it is? Counterparty is like a, oh, a digital asset kind of exchange that exists on top of uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. So it utilizes the same blockchain, um, but it uses this, whenever you send a Bitcoin transaction, you can actually send some like metadata, like a short string in this thing called off return. Um, and it's like, like 40 bytes of, of information you can send in there. And that allows you to build like a kind of a secondary network on top of it. And so with Counterparty, you can actually... Um, get these counterparty tokens, which you then um, issue out uh, further assets on, right? So, like, we had the same thing created for Dogecoin, which is called Doge Party, um, which actually Adam Levine and a bunch of other cool guys created. And um, people are creating all sorts of crazy tokens. Like, you can get, like, bacon tokens. And oh, yeah. All I sorts of, I yeah, I actually missed out. I want some bacon. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, some bacon. <laughs> it's really cool because it, it's a, it's a way of like cryptographically securing and exchanging digital assets, um, and ownership. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what Overstock do in that space. Um, cause up until now it's been mostly kind of like open source and hasn't had, I think the attention it requires. So I think they might actually split off and do their own like entirely independent blockchain, like different to, to Bitcoin. So we'll see what happens. Oh, I think a lot of, a lot of companies are going to go in that way. So like. Reddit, for instance, right? They they announced I think a week or two ago with the fifty million that they got in funding, they actually want to allocate a portion of that um, as like a cryptocurrency they're going to build, and they're going to like give it back to their users, which I think is awesome. Right. Um, and so I, I I think it's not going to be based on Dogecoin. It's not going to be based on Bitcoin. Um, it, I think it's going to be something entirely different, which they create. But uh, a lot of companies have taken notice of digital currency and how it can help uh, incentivize kind of like usage of, of their platform, right? Like the fact that people are tipping one another for posting cool things on Reddit with Dogecoin, Bitcoin, any coin, um, that makes Reddit happy because it means they have more active users. And right. so if they can build a currency in, which is essentially like a tangible amount of karma, right? At the moment, karma is just like, it doesn't matter. You've got a number next to your name. It's not really worth anything. Um, but if they can turn that into having an actual financial value, which can then be like traded in for cool things like perks or like um, I can trade it in for Reddit gold or something. That would be really awesome. So yeah, I think they're going to do that. And um, yeah, I was actually, I emailed Ishan, uh, CEO of Reddit to talk to me about it. So yeah, I, I'm excited about that. That's going to be awesome. I think it is interesting to see, I mean, loyalty has always been an interesting uh, world for companies, mm -hmm. period. And then having digital currencies where you could say, okay, it's not just like, you know, Microsoft credit or something like that for being on the forum and being a yeah. thought leader. It's like, okay, now that thought leadership means you can actually make money and you put more thought and emphasis in like just 
value into what you're saying and how you're sharing information. Yeah. yeah. People have always used tokens, like a lot of these companies have used tokens to build user engagement, which is like key to the success of any online community. But they haven't found a way to actually make people want those tokens because right. most of the time they're not worth anything. Uh, so if they can do that um, with this kind of like portion of this, I think it's like they wanted to do like 10% of the 50 million they're going to give back to uh, the users. So yeah. I'm really interested, like the big challenge there is going to be how they do the issuance of it. So like how they decide like who gets what, like if some, you know, because I have X many thousand karma points at the moment, do, am, I, am I going to get that many coins or I'm really interested to see how they do it. So It's always yeah. fascinating. Um, I remember when Gmail first came out and everyone's like, I really need a Gmail account. And so you're asking me, please. It was like exclusive. Do yeah. you have any? Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. It was like the same thing with like Facebook. It was like super exclusive. You know, only people that had like yeah, the EDU addresses got it. I remember when it came to Australia, it was like, whoa, Facebook, like, <laughs> finally. Yeah, it'll be, it's going to be fun. Uh, the next 10 years is going to be interesting to see. Everything's going to be like leaps and bounds in terms of innovation because actually the cryptography. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think cryptography has actually made decentralization possible and uh, it continues to. And so. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting. I, I think 2015 is going to be really interesting because I think 2014 was the year that um, that the media, the public, and then businesses took note of digital currency. Um, we kind of had like the, the, the proliferation of Dogecoin, which I think helped spread the word across like all the mainstream media. It was on yeah, TV you guys and stuff. Marketing but, for Bitcoin as well. Yeah, yeah, right. And then people are like, "What's this Dogecoin?" And they go to Wikipedia and they're like, "Oh, it's related to Bitcoin." And then they learn about what Bitcoin is and and all of a sudden somebody who went from like watching a nascar on their television is now a cryptocurrency enthusiast that's awesome so um and i think businesses have taken note and they're like okay we've got to get in on this thing um and so the thing that might take over the next few years might not be bitcoin it might not be dogecoin but it'll be like a v2 or a v3 um you know i, I think it's about convincing people that they actually want it um and more and more people, like I'll be on like the bus or the train or on a plane, and people will be like, I'll hear the word Bitcoin, and I'll be like, that's awesome. Like people are actually talking about um, something other than than just like paper money. So. Right, and then I think it's going to be fascinating to see what evolves with the cryptography and crypto, like decentralized network. Period. Who knows? Yeah, I actually was just reading an article about how you know next year is probably going to be like the emergence of the decentralized web. And it's really interesting because like the web, the web used to be decentralized. It used to be like literally thousands of servers sitting around and, and trying to very slowly connect with one another, right? <laughs> um, and then, you know, probably like five, ten years ago, we decided, oh, we, we, we want everything in the cloud. We want everything up in this one big cluster of servers. Um, but now people are starting to, like, realize how inherently insecure that is and how it actually, like, it means that we have, like, single points of failure. Like, I was reading this thing the other day about this guy who had all these files on Dropbox and something broke in the Dropbox app and now his files are gone. Oh. And it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. So decentralization and distribution helps that. So I think 2015 is going to be the year that we re-decentralize the web. And uh, it's going to be cool and exciting. We just have to put up with this little bit of pain at the end of the year while they, they nut out all the rules. And then once we have a rule book... I mean, well, at least hopefully, well, I, I know you and I are actually trying to mitigate that pain a little bit. We've got some events in the works. Yes, yes, yes we do. We have, there's actually, there's an event coming up, so that we're co-organizing uh, on it's the 18th of November. Yes. Right, so in a few weeks uh, with Tim Swanson. And so for those people who don't know Tim Swanson, he's like, he's like the most, you, you talk to him about Bitcoin, he's the most bearish person on Bitcoin I've ever met. So he's like, you know, he doesn't hold any tokens of any kind, but he, he knows his stuff. And uh, yeah, he it's going to be him and I doing kind of like a fireside chat talking about, you know, Bitcoin, is it the future of digital currency? But, um, you know, if not, then what else do we expect to see in the coming years? So uh, that's going to be awesome. I think there's going to be a small ticket price, but we'll have like drinks there and it's uh, to pay for the drinks. <laughs> yeah, come on, you know. We got it. There's going to be a loaded bar, hopefully. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Oh, and it will be at the vault in San Francisco. But we'll uh, provide a link with details at awesome. the end of this. I think I should have it up by this at the end of this video. And okay. we're actually also planning a Christmas party for all of Bitcoin and crypto world, right? Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the Cryptocurrency Alliance are having a winter ball, uh, and it's going to be cool. <laughs> 
I mean, I have. To, I, I might actually have to dress up for that. Oh, you yeah. have to. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna be Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> Santa Doge. I'm gonna Santa be like. Doge? Yeah, I'm gonna have like a big Doge mask on, and then like a Santa costume. No, but you don't need a mask. Everybody wants to see you. So. <laughs> You have to be something that showcases. This is, you know, Jackson Palmer with different haircuts. Maybe you just wear a massive wig. I could. I could. I'd get like a mohawk or like an afro or something. That'd be kind of cool. Blow us out of the water. Okay. Yeah. So you've, got to, you, you've got to come to the Christmas party just to see my hairstyle. So it'll be fun. We haven't got a date yet, but uh, we'll lock it in soon. And if anybody has a really cool venue that can like hold 200, 300 people and has a place for DJ and breakout rooms and everything cool tell us because we need we need a venue and we need to lock that in soon soon asap so i mean yes. hopefully by the end of next week and then we could tell everybody about it but it should be fun so you guys should all it's gonna be it. awesome i think everybody watching the came to dogecon or saw what happened at dogecon is gonna be like yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be even better than dogecon. i hope, so. I hope yeah. so and we'll try and keep it all ages friendly again oh absolutely yeah so we that worked out pretty well last time so yeah we had, you know, dogs even, so it was great. Dogs, kids, everybody. Everybody. Right. Families, mm -hmm. <laughs> companies. Everybody's welcome. Please do come. And then hopefully that will kind of round out the nice 2014 year that we've been having. And yeah. not, you know, not kind of keep all that heaviness with all the regulation that's going yeah, on. Yeah, well, look, if November's a nightmare, then December we can just all, you know, have some drinks and party. <laughs> I think drinks will be in order. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, what else? Oh, how's everything going on in Dogecoin? In Dogecoin, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's been a, it's been a. I think since we spoke, the price has kind of stabilized. What's really interesting with Dogecoin is uh, it doesn't seem like it's uh, pegged to Bitcoin anymore. Uh, I think because it's got this like huge Chinese market as well. Like you have a look at the trades in the Chinese yuan, and um, yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, Dogecoin is kind of a, a thing of its own. Um, what else has happened? So we had uh, a really cool, uh, a, the Doge car V2. Um, it was a V8 supercar. Uh, yeah, racing uh, with with Dogecoin on it. So it was really awesome to see that. Um, being Australian, um, I'm obviously into V8 supercars and Bathurst. And it was really cool to see that. Um, so that was all over Reddit. You can probably go and find photos uh, go find of it. Photos. We'll yeah. try and put one here. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so that was really cool to see. And yeah, I think we're just, um, the year's kind of like winding down, but um, Dogecoin's going strong, and hopefully uh, we can round out the year, like we were saying, with a really awesome event. I think Dogecoin's all about the people, and so um, to get them all in one space again, something awesome always happens, so we got to do it. Well, it's a caring community, so all yeah. the good sheaves are coming out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And it'll be fun. So, I mean, it's been a busy week, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah, it's non-stop. <laughs> Every week is a busy week. I know. It's kind of, what will they do next? <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually, I think October is shaping up to be one of the most busy months of the year. Mostly because you know, we've, got, we've got this stuff coming up with BitLicense, but we've also got, for all the tech enthusiasts out there, we've got like the Apple event, I think, which is in like, it's like next week. We've right. got like the Google event, you know. Uh, Salesforce is in town now. Yeah, there's Dreamforce up the road. I know. I can't get a cab anywhere because of the traffic. They close like streets off. Uber is at like 3.35 surge. I know. Speed. I've never seen the surge go to 3.5. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Like, I actually just like closed the app and got a cab instead. I'm like, who in their right mind is going to be like, yes to 3.5 percent, uh, 3.5 times the price? It's crazy. Well, and then actually Black Friday is going to be big, right? Hopefully. Oh yeah, this is going to be my first first Black Friday, first Thanksgiving in America. So. Yeah, everybody has to spend something in digital currency on Black Friday. Oh, yeah. Is, is there going to be like a Bitcoin Black Friday? I think so. I think I've seen whisperings of it on Reddit. Well, I'll look into it and figure out what date. Awesome. You know, we can cover it next time. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Cool. Well, great, Jackson. Thank you for Good being on the show. Good seeing you again. And I hope everyone enjoyed our extremely intense discussion and also lighthearted discussion today <laughs> i think it was good we had a little bit of a we, got, we, we talked about like serious business and then it kind of like went fun times and yeah. <laughs> let's hope it stays good but yeah i mean well it's good to address i think the whole point is both you and i want to make sure everybody is well informed and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah and i think the other thing is like a lot of people like right now are being like oh no this is fun this is just gonna drop the bitcoin but that's totally not the case like and for the sake of everybody involved, like, 
read the news, stay up to date with all the regulations, and uh, yeah, watch this space, I guess. I'm sure you're going to be covering a lot more of it soon, Tina, so you've got your work cut out for you. <laughs> very busy winter coming up, yes. Yeah. But we'll be here. We're going to try and keep our, you know, community feed going, so. Awesome. Yes, thank you. Well, have a good Sunday. You too. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>